Howdy! It's Tubal Cain again, and this time to continue on this series of bolt circles, the four different methods. And in the last video, number 153, I showed you how to uh, drill the holes in a bolt circle using the uh, digital readout. So if you haven't seen that, go back and uh, look at uh, video tips 153, and this is video tips 154. We're going to use the rotary table method to do the exact same operation of uh, locating and drilling six holes. Now these methods uh, for bolt circles can be applied to virtually any project where you have a, a, a bolt circle, but this specifically was applied to my little steam engines and normally I use a spoked flywheel as mentioned before, but uh, since you won't be able to do that at home, this is a, another way of making the little flywheels with the bolt circle to give it somewhat of an appearance of a, a spoked wheel and to reduce the weight on the inside because the weight is only needed on the rim of a flywheel. So let's step over to the Bridgeport Mill and take a look at my little rotary table and how I've set it up. This is a little 6 inch rotary table my brother gave to me some time ago and it's a 6 inch diameter here on the little table. I do not have a bigger one, this is all I have, but my work is small so this is going to be just fine. Now my brother mounted this on a spacer years ago to get the uh, crank up and off so it wouldn't interfere with the table if you had this mounted on a larger table because the wheel here hangs down a little bit below uh, this surface right here. Also it's mounted on a plate and I'm not sure why he did that other than it's very quick to uh, move this from one uh, machine to another with uh, some slots that he had built in there. So that's my rotary table and the first thing you need to do is to locate this uh, table uh, on your milling machine in reference to the center of this hole lining up with the center or the axis of the spindle of the machine. Now I've already done the indicating off camera but this is a little uh, sterile last word indicator but you can use whatever kind of indicator you have an Indicol uh, holder but this is just held in the chuck by the stem and when rotating the spindle now I'm getting a zero reading on the dial in all four directions so I know now that this hole is lined up with the center of the spindle and I'm within a thousandth or less and now having done that I locked the table in both directions and I turned on my digital readout and I've zeroed it out and I will not turn this off until the job is done. An alternate way of doing that job is to uh, turn yourself down a, a disc and this is a 24 millimeter hole here and uh, so turn that to uh, 24 millimeter and I've got a 3 16 hole in there but it could be any size hole and the larger the better actually and then a corresponding shaft in here and line it up in that manner that would be semi accurate not as uh, as accurate as the indicator method but it would be satisfactory especially for this particular job that we're doing here that doesn't really need all that much accuracy but I'm trying to show you the more accurate ways so that's another way of doing it. Now next we need to locate our work and this is the two and a half inch steel that we're going to drill a bolt circle in. It needs to also be located in the center of the table corresponding to the center of this uh, this hole here. In other words everything needs to be concentric. Now I don't want to drill into the table and ruin it so I prepared a small piece of aluminum packing that's just been sanded to a little bit less than two and a half and that'll go underneath it here and uh, so I can drill into the aluminum it'll be sacrificial if you will and now using that 3 16 rod in my Elbrecht chuck I have centered the work on the table and now I'm ready to clamp it 
I had to add two toe clamps down here to this steel plate which was warped. It wasn't true and there was some flexing going on. In other words it wasn't setting flat on the milling machine table so it's clamped now with uh, two yellow clamps and then uh, two other bolts which should be more than secure enough for this job. And I also have the work clamped down to the rotary table. It's centered. The digital readout is still on center. Now this was no small job to find the right clamps here. I needed clamps that were small enough to fit on the table and not interfere with uh, where I'm going to drill the hole. So these are rather stubby things. 3 8 bolts and I found some T-bolts that uh, fit in there even though these are metric slots. Everything seems to be metric on this thing. And I've got some packing here and uh, plenty of room to do my drilling and now I am ready to drill. Now remember I'm going to drill six holes. Now uh, you may be drilling a different number of holes but uh, this is what we're concerned with for this little project. And so it's a six bolt circle, six hole bolt circle. There's 360 degrees in a circle so there will be 60 degrees between the holes. Now if you look at the rotary table here you'll see there's a ring that goes clear around here and it's divided into degrees 360 degrees so right now I'm on or about zero and I will always be turning it in this direction so my first hole will be on zero and then I'm going to go clear to the next uh, hole here will be 60 degrees and then it'll be 120 degrees 180 240 and 300 that gives me a total of uh, six holes now let's take a look at the crank here and the, the zero marks on the crank pay no attention to these other uh, marks here we're only interested in the zero right at the tip of my fingernail and I'm always turning in this direction I must never pass the zero mark if I do just going back a little bit is not going to uh, do any good because I have backlash so should you overshoot the mark be sure and back it up a turn or so and then come back into the zero again even there I'm a little bit past so I would have to back it up and come into the zero that removes the backlash or the lost motion that's important naturally I'm not going to be drilling in the center so I'm still on the zero marks in the X and the Y axis so if you will recall this is an inch and a quarter bolt circle which is 1.250 and half of that, the radius that is, is 0.625 or 5 eighths of an inch. So for the first hole I'm going to move in the x-axis now 625 thousandths. Right there and that's where the first hole will be. Looking at the digital readout, you see I'm at 0.625 and uh, the Y is at zero and will stay there and this will not change now for the entire uh, project. All of the movement of the work will be with the rotary table. Now I will lock the milling machine table in the Y axis and again in the X axis and those will remain locked. Then be sure and look up at your uh, digital readout and make sure that nothing has moved. Sometimes you have a little bit of a movement when you tighten the locks. So you have to allow for that or correct it so that we're back to these settings. In review, I'm at uh, zero degrees 
and I'm now going to lock the rotary table and that can be done with my Bondus ball driver. Tighten this and this and I will uh, tighten that <clears throat> for each hole. Just snug them up so that we don't have any movement. Now I'm ready to drill the first hole. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to center drill all six holes. Then I'm going to come back and uh, drill all three of them, the pilot size, three sixteenths, and then come back and uh, drill the final size, which is uh, seven sixteenths. So actually I'm going to drill 18 holes. And you also have your choice here, like I did on the other one. If you want to just uh, change the tooling here, in other words, center drill, then uh, pilot drill, finish size, and then uh, rotate the, uh, the table. You know, you can do it either way, but this time I'm going to center drill all six of them. I'm not sure I mentioned this, but I'm a big fan of stubby drill bits. So these are extra short drill bits, and when you do that, you don't have to worry about uh, the spacing here like you, you will with long jobber length bits. So get yourself sets of stubby bits. Now I'm ready to drill the first hole. I know I said that before. You just want to get it started. They don't have to be very deep. Then unlock. I'm turning it to 60 degrees. Locking it again. Drilling the next one. And so on, all the way around. This is hole three at 120 degrees. This is hole four at 180 degrees. This is hole five at 240 degrees and hole 6 300 degrees I will now redrill all six holes with the 316 pilot hole or pilot drill and I have set my uh, depth stop here so that the quill will go no farther than that and that will allow me to drill about halfway into the aluminum packing there but not into the table itself and I've turned the rotary table again to zero as far as my stop allows me and there are some aluminum chips on the bit and I will do all six holes actually I'll do uh, I'll meet you on the sixth hole as I drill that I'm at 300 degrees and I'm going to drill the sixth hole and then I'll put a little oil on it by the way if you like my spill proof oil can uh, and have not seen uh, Machine Shop Tips 135 I show how to make those Now that went real fast on those six holes. I know I did them off camera, but it didn't take very long at all. Now I will change drill bits. And I sure do love this Albrecht keyless chuck. 
The 7 16 bit is in the Albrecht chuck, and I have reset uh, the depth stop. There we go, hole one, and I will uh, meet you on the sixth hole for a drink. Okay, this is hole six, 300 degrees. I guess we'll wait a while for that coffee. Now let's take it off and see what we got. Now be sure and wear safety glasses or a face shield because you can see those chips were really flying. Dress properly. Observe all safety rules when you're in the shop. Not even too much in the way of burrs on the backside because the packing here took the beating and prevented burrs. Let's clean it up and go to the bench. There it is cleaned up. I can take the burrs off of it just with my hand uh, countersink because it's going to be uh, recessed like this one anyway. And then I will have to reburr it again or countersink it like uh, the original one here if I can find it. I like to put a nice countersink on them like that when it's done. I don't know what I did with the other one. I guess it's over on the milling machine. Actually I can use it like this, but I do prefer the looks of this uh, recessed business and the, of the hub and the rim. It makes it look more like a, a flywheel I think for the little extra work that's involved and of course we still need a set screw too. So that is uh, 154, part 2, rotary table method. Stay tuned and watch number 155, which is basically repeating the whole job, only using the index or dividing head on the Bridgeport Mill. I hope this little video, or this series of videos, is useful to you. This is Tubal Cain saying so long for now.